So, <laughs> um, we met in Maryland um, at a birthday dinner. I didn't think that I was going to meet anybody that day. <laughs> I was just kind of like, you know, going with the flow. And I asked you for your food and you gave it to me. Actually, before that, you were very quiet, like in the corner. And it was very like intriguing. And then you took a picture of me, remember? I think yeah. we can still find that picture. <laughs> yeah, it's on my tummy, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you took a picture of me and then I asked for your plate of food and they and yeah. you um gave it to me. It was shrimp fried rice. It was at what was that place called? Tai no, it wasn't Tai Bung. It did so long. Thai Cottage? I don't know. Nah. I used to think about it, but um, that's how we met. And I remember us like walking out and we were going the opposite way. And I felt the strongest pull that I've ever felt in my life. And it wasn't like pull, like it was more like on a spiritual yeah. note. And I felt like I met somebody in my life that was gonna change my life a whole lot. Actually, when I met you, it was uh, it's funny enough because I, I noticed you out of everything, right? Um, it was crazy because I didn't really want to be there that night. Really? But something told me to, something still told me to go, you know? And uh, I went. And when you, well, actually, when you walked in, right? I was like, damn, who is that? You just walked in laughing. You know how you are, like yeah. loud. You feel me? So <laughs> extra. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. You walked in and I looked at you. You probably didn't even. You couldn't tell, but I was looking at you from the corner of my eyes. Wow. You know. That. And remember that night when we walked. That same night when we walked out. Mm -hmm. I actually asked you. If, actually, if you wanted to, if you needed help carrying something like a cake, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I right? said, no, I got it. You were it. like, you're good, right? And then when we walked out, we turned around at the same time. I know, that was weird, way. like a freaking movie <laughs> or something. Like, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> so we went opposite ways. And um, yeah, when I looked at you, it was like my whole world froze for a second. I know, that's how I felt. You know, and I was like, I'm going to see this woman again. Yeah. You know? I remember the second time we met, and I used to call you um, <laughs> Ragley. Raggly. <laughs> and I was like messing with you and goofing off with you and I was like raggly. Yeah. <laughs> and like um you took a picture of me and then like I was bored. And I was just like, hey, you're ugly. You were like, no, I'm not. I'm not. And I was like, you right, you're not. Put your number. <laughs> <laughs> Put your number in my phone, boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um because honestly, like when I met you, that day actually, like mm -hmm. I wasn't about to ask you for your number. Really? Why? Because I don't want to be, I guess, rejected. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, after you've been hurt sometimes, you just don't want to be hurt again. So, like, when you. Yeah. I liked you. You feel me? I liked you a lot. I didn't know that. I did. You feel me? <laughs> I did. Um, and that's why, like, when you did, I was really happy because. I don't know, I had a different feeling about you. Mm -hmm. Like you were, you were a different person. Really? That's how I felt about you. Yeah. Um, over the course of our relationship, that's how I felt about you. And I remember when you asked me to be your girlfriend, that was big, that yeah. was major. Um, I think we asked each other, like you asked me over the phone. Yeah, I was like, you know you're my girl, right? You remember that night? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. It was so corny. But it worked. Yeah. Yeah. It worked. And then, like, um, came to your house. I mean, this was when I was staying with, you know, those people. When I was, like, a, you know, heavy for God, you know, like, religious. And, yeah, we started dating. And I felt like it just got really
So how did you feel when we had to sneak around? I feel like it hurt. I feel like um, I feel like they kind of used religion to kind of like mess with our relationship. I feel like we didn't really experience the honeymoon feeling or the honeymoon moment just because it kind of got robbed from us. Um, I remember like every time that I would talk to you, it would always be like a repercussion or like an issue. Like, like they made us feel bad for being in love, right? Yeah, they, they, I definitely thought I was doing something wrong by being in love with you. I felt like we weren't meant to be together because of what like they did and the way like I always would get in trouble and you know I was very like so strong in my faith and like I did want to pursue God and they made it seem like well you're pursuing God and you can't fall in love because if you fall in love God is a jealous God and God is not going to love you and God is not going to provide for you and God is not going to be there for you and just like the time when they told me to take a break when we first like were boyfriend and girlfriend and they told me that oh you guys are spending too much time together you should take a break and I told you that we should take a break and I felt like it hurt you that I did I felt like you didn't want us to take a break but I had to take a break because like the people I was staying with felt like you were stopping me from God from pursuing God, pursuing God. And I just felt like shit got worse. I felt like we only <laughs> we only would see each other probably like an hour or two in a day, and we'll like have to catch the bus and I had to catch the train to see each other. And um, sorry. <laughs> And I know we never like, we don't really talk about it. Like we really keep this like buried. Yeah. But like that, those moments in our life where we had to like sneak around and when we'll be in the same space and they will tell us that we couldn't speak to each other or we couldn't look at each other because they didn't want us to interact with each other. Um. It was really hard because I didn't like I wanted them to love me but I wanted them to love you and it was just like they just didn't like you for no reason and I never understood it I never understood it because it was just like I'm pursuing this religion and it's like oh Roland and Susan were on the phone together for a long time. Funny enough, we weren't even having sex. And just like the time, like they told us that we went to the car to go have sex and we didn't have sex. And it was just like, these people keep making me feel unwanted, making me feel unloved, making me feel unworthy. And yeah, I like forgave them and I felt like I let it go, but I feel like it affected our relationship because I don't know how to be affectionate, affectionate with you and I don't know how to be emotional with you and I'm very strong. Like, I don't know. Get you tissue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. I didn't want to cry. Shit. Can you please drop me tissue? I don't want to cry, dog. So I didn't know how to be affectionate with you and I felt like we had to sneak around and remember the first time we actually went on a date <laughs> to Wee Town Center? Yeah. And we like took some pictures. This was after like I, I shaved my head off. Remember when you cut your hair yeah, off for me? Uh, you know when you called me that night? Because <laughs> I cut my hair. <laughs> yeah, that night you cut your hair it was crazy because 
That was the first time I had to be, you know, kind of like play a supportive role for you. Mm -hmm. um, you, we both know you butchered your hair, right? <laughs> you know? Schemo! <laughs> yeah. You know? We both know you just butchered your hair. Right, right, right. right. Um, and I didn't want you to feel bad. I know. So, you know how proud, proud I am of my hair? You cut it all off. I cut it all off for you. Because I wanted you to know that. I know you were embarrassed a little bit, but I wanted to feel that with you. You know? You know? Bro. <laughs> Yo. Yo we never talk about this shit. Appreciate that. Yeah, I didn't want you to feel alone because honestly, everything like just imagine us living in our own little world, right? Yeah. And everything around us is just like chaos, chaos and <laughs> people telling us to break up. My mom telling me to break up with you. My older brother telling me to break up with you. So that made me feel like I had nobody but you. You know? See? <laughs> so, if you're gonna go through pain, I'm gonna go through it with you. Right. If you're gonna feel embarrassed, I'm gonna be embarrassed with you. Right. Because you're my twin, you know that? I know. So, yeah. That was, a, that was the first time, that was the first time I had to step up as your boyfriend because you had nobody. Yeah. So nobody was really telling you how beautiful you were every day, right? No. And I want you to feel beautiful. <laughs> um yeah so during those that that time when i was staying with them like the family friend you, you know what i'm talking about yeah, like when, yeah. when i was staying with them you know because like i my dad didn't want me my mom was in texas i felt like they had they had control over me and they wanted to control our relationship and they will always use like every little moment to bring God into it and be like, oh, they're on the phone. They don't, she doesn't spend time with God anymore. And I don't think that this is a healthy relationship. I don't think that that's your soulmate. How do you know that that, how do you know that's your bone of bone? How do you know that that's the one for you? And they use religion to try to destroy us. And instead of them giving us love, it was more so like they would chastise us, but praise the other couples that were in a relationship just because they've been saved longer or whatever the case may be. And I just felt like every part of our relationship was us running from them. Hiding. Every hiding from them. Yeah. Every part of our relationship was us um, was us fighting for our love, fighting for, you know, happiness because honestly I wasn't happy until you came into my life and that's a lot to say even when I was chasing religion because I felt like I was lost I wasn't happy till you came into my life and it was almost like everybody had a voice in our relationship that we didn't even include just like when Sade had hit me up and she I didn't know her like that for her to tell me that you and Roland need to break up for people that I do not know to have a saying in my relationship and God forbid we would have broken up God forbid we would have listened to them we would have been unhappy because we lost a so chance but our soulmate you lost a chance with us because of people's idea of what religion is and trying to use religion to control us and trying to use religion to break us up. Even to the fact that they kicked me out at 2 a.m. in the morning because they felt like I was talking about their mother. And we had, like, I had to move to Texas. I had to leave you. My heart broke when you were on that other side of that mirror and I had to look at you through a window 
and not see you for months. That was the hardest time in my life was leaving you. You want to know something? What? I never told you the story, right? No, you didn't. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> so, so you remember that you left on a Saturday morning, right? Yeah. I thought it was Friday. Really? Yeah. Because I woke up 6 a.m., right? You will never believe how fast I got ready that morning. Like, I took two, <laughs> I took two cabs. Two cabs. Yo, it's like I could remember that shit. Cause like I dead ass, like I dead ass buried the fuck out of these memories, like. I took two cabs. Mm -hmm. I walked on the side of the highway. Like, as cars were rushing by. Really? Like. 60 mile per hour cars. Because I knew, like, my nobody in my family would take me to come see you. And I got to the, the train station because I needed to take the train to get to the airport. Right. It was a Saturday. <laughs> and the train schedule was not on the regular. Yeah, it's always crazy. Okay. So I thought I was going to catch the train at 10 a.m. to come see you before 11 30. the train wasn't supposed to come till one and i had to call brandon and you almost made it you made it enough <laughs> to, to be yeah, on he, the other side he, he got off work he, he got because he worked overnight he got off work he's still sleeping he got ready within 10 minutes and got me he drove to the airport bwi airport Bro, when I saw you on the other side of the glass, that shit killed me because after everything we've been through, them breaking us up, trying to break us up, seeing you on the other side of the glass, I thought I was never gonna see you again. Like, do you understand that? Being able to see the love of your life on the other side of a window, of a, of a glass. Y'all can even touch each other. Bro. It's probably, like, that's the reason why I don't really think about Maryland like that because... It was one of the hardest times in my life. Yeah, because people made... We were only how old? How we were 19. 19 years old. And they, people, they made us feel bad for being in love. You know what I'm saying? Like, to the point where I couldn't even share how happy I was... Was to be with you. To be with you. On social media. Right, because they told us we couldn't post each other. Or to even talk to you about my mom, you know, talk to my mom about you. You know how every <laughs> every guy on this planet wants to be able to tell their mom, yo, I found I found a woman right. that I'm happy to be able to be with. Right. I couldn't do that because right. nobody supported our relationship. No. You and it, 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 it almost feels like we're in this world by ourselves. And that, that's crazy because that's why we're the way we are. We keep to ourselves. And I'm pretty sure nobody knows why we are like that. Because we have to fight. Everybody. Literally everybody. The church, our our families. Just because we wanted to be in love. You, 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 you see how that messes up somebody's head? Yeah. It's messed up. It is. You know? But. We're going to be okay. I mean, we're here now. We are. You know, we didn't let anybody, you know, destroy our relationship. Yeah. And we got married by right. ourselves. We had nobody. Nobody there. there. Because we don't need anybody. We don't. we don't need anybody but ourselves and God. Because God didn't make a mistake when we met. And religion is not going to stop us from being in love. Because I love you with all of my heart and all of my being. I would die for you. I'll do anything for you. 
<laughs> because this world is fickle and people are fickle and they wanted to destroy our love and they didn't and they would never do it. They never will. They never will. Go ahead. So I know you said you didn't want any, any presents, right? Right. So I wrote you a letter. Oh, you did? All right. You want me to read it? Okay. It's not much. Okay, to my queen. You've never been the flirty type. And flashy. I. The, oh, the flashy type. <laughs> I know, right? You've never been the flashy type. I know you told me not to get you anything for Valentine's Day. I know I write you a lot of letters because that's how you love to communicate. But this year, I want to do something differently in this letter. I give my heart to you again. Not because you're my soulmate, but because I woke up today with a new type of love for you. An eternal love. A love that is all. A love that's unwavering. I promise you that I will be by your side through everything because you're a reflection of me and I can't bear to not be with you. I promise to continue to make you the happiest woman on this planet. I love you. I'm not gonna let these motherfuckers knock us down because we ain't never gonna stop. And that's period. <laughs> that is period. That is period. Nah.